I really love the style of this pinnacle stone here. It's so elaborate. I've skipped over to the other side of the graveyard, which appears to be fairly new. However, I am seeing a few Civil War graves, just like this one over here. And a very interesting design. Uh, again, a granite marker. And it looks like uh, it's just not polished around the edges, which is why uh, they appear to have different colors uh, on a lot of the stones like this. And so when something isn't polished it actually makes it easier for plant life and dirt and things like that to stick to the surface. And directly this way it looks like a very very old section as well and everything towards the front appears to be fairly new. It looks like this is the Plum family section. And again, it kind of looks like uh, at some point, although this would have been a way longer ago than, than the recently replaced stones, but it looks as if they have put replacements here or the husband and wife uh, had purchased uh, their own markers and then maybe the, this one here was supplied by the uh, United States. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but it is the same exact name as this uh, headstone here and appears uh, like it wouldn't be a different uh, person just because of the date of birth and death, although they are not marked on this particular headstone here. So again, if you happen to know why a situation like this would occur please let me know in the comments below I would love to uh, learn why there is uh, markers like this where uh, it appears they've uh, supplied their own marker and then another veterans marker as well as the GAR star uh, have been placed directly behind it Actually directly behind here is not a veteran's grave, however, actually it is, I didn't notice the star there. But they were a veteran of the Civil War and also a member of the Masons. You can see, as I've passed by several times, there's this little structure up here at the front, which still has electricity running to it and quite a few different cameras on it as well, but it appears like it's still being used as a storage area. I'm not sure if in the past maybe it was a old chapel or potentially a place for family members to gather before a, a burial. However, they are continuing to use it to this day. However, we'll go up here and check it out real quick. You can't get inside. Uh, it's very clearly a motion sensor camera at the front. As you can see right up here, along with uh, very clear signs. But it's a really neat building. And then this very interesting marker here. It's a very 
very young child's grave and it's very interesting because it has a shape similar to a lot of the Civil War and Spanish-American War veterans graves. I don't know if that's a sign that their father may have been a veteran or if uh, that was chosen for a different reason. There's a very new section across the street here so I'm not going to do any filming over there. However, there is a little board up here. I don't know if it has any historical... No, this is just paperwork it looks like uh, regarding the rules and regulations of the graveyard. This is a member of the Ohio Infantry and a Civil War veteran. I found this kind of interesting because you can see because of the uh, coloring of the base stone that as the uh, marker has aged and been rained on, it has dripped down a lot of the minerals uh, from the metal. You can see uh, that it's dripped down onto the stone and begun to discolor the stone below. Kind of makes me wonder what actually is in there. However, from the looks of it, I'm guessing more than a few people have tried to get in over the years and maybe cause some damage, unfortunately. And up ahead of here is this incredible looking vault. It looks like from here that it may have its own staircase leading up to it, although I'm not really sure. I'm also not really sure of the age either, so I don't want to film it if it's brand new. Oh wow. So it's not incredibly new. And this is definitely a veteran's grave here. And one of the most unique burials that I have actually ever seen around here. You can see that they were a veteran of the Korean War. And they even have their marker right over here. And they've even included a bench here in the center so that family members can come up and sit with them. And you can just imagine the epic level of effort put into creating this monument to these people. And as I've never seen before, you can even see the time of day that they passed away. And it actually was not too long ago. And right behind it, there are three more Civil War veterans who have had updated markers. And each one of them has had the GAR marker, like the rest here in this uh, graveyard, placed into the base stone. And I'm guessing that this little hole is actually so that uh, the organizations can come out and place flags here. And unlike the rest of the headstones in this uh, graveyard, there's actually been a small coin implanted in the base stone as well which I believe is a symbol of respect to veterans because I see it on a lot of graves. And it's so decayed at this point that I can't actually tell what type of coin it is or how old it is. However, it may have been a coin that was placed there long before the uh, marker was replaced with the newer updated headstone. Um, here is the rather beautiful and epic entryway. And unlike a lot of places, there's no evidence here that there's ever been a gate. And from the plaque, we can see that this is a fairly old entryway and was erected in 1927. And right on the other side, in what seems to be another family section, is another one of these very large tree-style markers. I'd love to see if it's actually inscribed with the organization that one of you were mentioning uh, in an earlier episode. 
And it's not mentioning any type of fraternal organization. And unfortunately, I'm also not seeing any markings uh, stating who or where they were manufactured at. However, it's always one of my favorite markers to find. And not too far behind is another one of the tree-shaped markers, which is not quite as big as the last one. However, they all seem to be a slightly different size and a slightly different design. And similarly to a recent one that I found, this one has a rope carved into it and has the appearance of a hanging sign with this husband and wife's name hanging on the branch. And it even looks as if it's made to look like a scroll. As you can see it's not completely straight and looks like it's sort of uh, moving in the wind or taking on the shape of the various curves in the tree and the branches hitting the back of it. So a lot of thought went into this when it was designed. And directly next to it is a Civil War veteran of the 13th Indiana Infantry, although it seems to be a completely different last name. So it must have just been somewhat random that they were buried right next to someone of the last name Rummel, or they may have been distant relatives. And I would guess at one time that this had a very, very large pinnacle going uh, up in the air. However, over the years it's probably fallen and again, like I said before, sunk into the ground on one of the sides of the headstone. But just a guess based upon some of the size of these other pinnacles, it appears like it would have been a very, very tall marker. And it may have even been a branch from this tree behind that caused the pinnacle to fall from the top. Or again, it could be just due to erosion and the stone has been evened out over the years by putting uh, bricks and stones underneath of it. This is not a veteran again, however, I found the name very, very interesting, including having a last name of Donald. Okay, no, I actually I can see the Mick now, so it actually is McDonald, which is a little bit more uh, common of a name. So I'm guessing it's Angus is what it looks like, although the G is showing a little wear so it almost looks like an O. And here it appears that family members have placed little pebbles and stones around the base to uh, decorate it. And some of them have been moved recently, so I'm not exactly sure to the reasoning, but it appears to be decorative. And right next to it is a Civil War veteran. And they were also, appears a member of whatever uh, fraternal organization that these markers represent. And you can see the GAR marker here is becoming slightly covered up by the new growth this spring. However, I'm sure that will be rectified fairly soon. And the marker of Mary, who obviously is referred to here as Mother, 
uh, has sunk a little bit and you can tell just because of the stone marker that we previously looked at labeled with father is actually about five or six inches above the ground. And there's one lone marker down this hill here and it itself appears to be a historic one as well. I can see here that they did pass in the 1800s. And so as a lot of you have indicated in the past, uh, it may be here due to the cause of death, which may have been from some sort of disease. And so they were buried at the very edge in an effort to potentially not transmit the disease and at the base here it's uh, visible that uh, the erosion has caused the stone to start to fall this way and will eventually need some additional bricks or stones placed underneath it so that it does not continue to fall into the ground and get buried. So although it was unfortunate that we were not able to get into this beautiful mausoleum it still was an epic explore here. Some amazing uh, veterans that were uh, buried here from uh, so many different wars. So I'd like to thank you for watching uh, this second part of the two-part graveyard series here in this amazing location. And I will see you all in the next adventure.